Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the bloodbath continues as four more murders now hit the record books. We have a recap of a crime-riddled night. The city market saga continues to make headlines. We'll tell you now why employees say things have turned for the worse. And celebrating life, a cancer support group celebrates 11 years. Stay close. The Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It's the second spate of murders in less than three days, making it perhaps the deadliest 60 hours in the country's history. Thanks for joining us for the late edition of the Weekend Edition. I'm Clint Watson reporting tonight. In the past 24 hours, four murders have been committed. One police official classified it as foreboding for our country. Now their hands are full investigating a total of six murders this week alone. Tonight, Von Aubrey has a recap of those stories, which brought the country's record murder count to one shy of the triple digits. Period from 9 p.m. Friday to just before 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon proved the deadliest for police to date. You see, early in the morning, three murders were recorded separately. And if that wasn't enough for members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, they were again out Saturday afternoon at the center burial ground between Dowswell and East Bay Streets, just east of the Eastern Parade, investigating yet another apparent murder. Assistant Commissioner of Police, Hewlin Hanna, gives the details. We met a black male lying on his back, clad in short pants and a t-shirt. Uh, he appeared to be unresponsive, lifeless, and uh, after the officials were summoned, he was declared dead at this location. Further examination of his body discovered a stab wound, or what appeared to be a stab wound to the midsection. Uh, there was a wheelchair nearby. These two persons appeared stunned at the news of the stabbing death, having just seen the deceased earlier in the day. He was reportedly handicapped and a resident of York Street. This morning, From this morning, he's on a dock, right leg in his wheelchair, but after that they said he had an argument with a security officer at the uh, number place. But I didn't know what happened, so I can't say it's a medium or something. That's a cripple man. No, no, he's crippled, but, but who won't kill a crippled man? <laughs> Boy, life ain't easy. Police believe that murder victim is in his 40s. Now, murder number 96 happened around 4 a.m. on West Bay Street near Love Beach Estates. Assistant Superintendent of Police Stephen Dean was on the scene. Shortly after 9 p.m. on Friday, 16th of September 2011, the police re received a report of gunshots being fired in the West Bay Street area. Police responded, and upon arrival in the area of Love Beach Estate area, they discovered a male, a dark male, lying on the ground with apparent gunshot wounds. EMS personnel came on the scene, and they pronounced the body dead. At this stage, police have no motive the, we are early in our investigations. We will immediately content, commence an intense investigation into this matter. And the deadly incidents didn't stop there, as murders 97 and 98 happened within half an hour of the wee hours Saturday morning. Shortly after 3 a.m. last night, um, police received a report that a man had turned up to the PMH with multiple gunshot wounds. Officers went to the hospital and confirmed same. The male was examined by persons at the hospital, medical practitioners there, and pronounced dead. What we can tell you, other inquiries done into the matter, is telling us that this incident stemmed from a shooting incident in the Camp Road area that happened much earlier. So police are actively investigating that partic this particular matter. Um, shortly thereafter, Sometime before 4 a.m. this morning, police received a report of a male being stabbed in the Miami Street area. Officers respond where they met the body of a, body of a male lying down with apparent, gun, apparent stab wounds to his upper body. EMS personnel came on the scene. They pronounced him dead. Right now, police are following significant leads in both, both of those matters. 
we believe that we're getting a headway because we believe they might be related to one or two other matters. So police are actively pursuing those matters. And with those four deaths, the murder count for the year stands at 99. Sadly, it is just the middle of September, three and a half months before the end of the year. However, while the appeal goes out for those with information on any of these four murders to contact police, Assistant Commissioner Hanna notes that most of these murders involve persons from a particular demographic, those in and out of the criminal justice system. In a lot of instances, and I don't speak with specific reference to this, but in a lot of instances, we're satisfied that it appeared to be people from certain categories. Now, a life is a life, a murder is a murder. But, but if there is a perspective, not a spin, but a perspective to all of this, it is that it seemed to be a constituent or constituency of, of people who are falling victim to these heinous offenses. And I am Vaughn Aubrey, ZNS News. And we can also report to you that among the blood shed last night, another male was shot. Police say the man was driven to the Princess Margaret Hospital in a private vehicle. He had a gunshot wound to the upper body. He is now listed in critical condition. No other details on what transpired are available at this time, but police say they are also investigating that particular matter. Now, police say they have in their custody tonight a suspect for that Miami Street murder overnight. Police also released the identity of the victim from the Ridgeland Park murder on Thursday morning. He's been identified as 32-year-old Clayton Damiel Smith. Now, police have also released new photos of the men they want to question in connection with a number of crimes. First is 24-year-old Andre Wallace, alias Muggs, is wanted in connection with Thursday's murder on Crooked Island Street. His last known address is First Street. He is a dark complexion, medium build, and it's about eight, about five feet, nine inches tall. Next, Montre Thompson, aka Monty Thompson, is wanted for attempted murder. You may remember also early Thursday morning, we told you of a man who was shot in the face while in a bedroom. He is listed in serious condition. Thompson is 36 years of age, dark brown, and about five feet, eight inches, and medium build. Now, police have just informed us that he's now in custody. And the third man wanted tonight is Van Wright Newton, aka VJ. He's 21 years of Miami Street about dark dark brown complexion, five feet eight inches, and medium build. He's wanted for attempted murder of a couple shot recently. Well, Superintendent Stephen Dean told reporters today that although the men have not yet been found, well, except for the one we told you is now in custody, since releasing those photos last night on ZNS, the public has been coming forward. Like always, when we issue appeal, no one has turned in, but we want to thank members of the public who continue to call of sightings um, of these men. And we feel confident, based on what we see, that we will have these men in custody very shortly. Again, we tell you, Monty Thompson has just been taken into custody by police. Well, now this marks six murders in a matter of days. And what's even worse is these slayings happen just after the National Day of Prayer. In light of this, Christian Council President Ranford Patterson is calling for peace. Patterson also expressed a concern about the number of persons on bail committing crime. He calls on parliamentarians to come together and address this issue. The call must be um, for the government and the opposition and everyone to come together. I, I think maybe we need to convene a special um, sitting of parliament so that we can deal with this bail act because this, the information that I, get, I got states that the majority, close to 90% of the murders that have that has been um, committed over the last several months was as a result of persons out on bail. And so if I'm on bail because I killed somebody, what do I have to lose? If I'm getting mur um, life sentence, I get life for one and I get life for 10. So it doesn't really matter. Well, despite critics who may think that the church is not doing enough, the council president says the church is doing its part. Our job is to pray. Our job is to seek God's guidance and God's direction. We're doing our job. We just need everybody in this country to do their job. And that's what we need to do. We need to get back, to take this country back, man. This is, this is our country, man. And um, unless we are willing to make the necessary sacrifices, I can say to us today that we're going to lose big. All of us are going to lose.